Welcome everyone and good morning. Uh, this is the uh, Metrolink Board of Directors. It's our virtual meeting. It's our second throughout this pandemic. We have continued to do our work, uh, but some of it has gone uh, virtually. So this is our, as I said, our very uh, second virtual meeting. And um, we, all of the senior management team are here online. They're in probably different locations all over the place. You might see some with masks, some without, depending if you're like me in a closed office. Um, but like the rest of the world, we've been continuing to do our work. Uh, uh, many of our staff are on the front lines and have continued on the front lines every day. Some of them are in construction sites, that's continued. But much of our work has continued uh, virtually, um, including like things like public consultations. Uh, we've had seven formal engagements. We've had 35 public meetings um, that have reached uh, over 13,000 registered people. Reaches far more than, than, than who is registered though because we have a really great uh, uh, website that uh, allows for uh, formal engagement and informal engagement. Um, and you're welcome to go there anytime. It's metrolinksengage.com. We're always open to ideas and comments and how we can do even these kinds of things like our virtual meetings better. But now we're going to move into the, uh, the meeting and I'm going to start with, by, with opening remarks with, from our Chair, Don Wright. Over to you, Don. Uh, thank you, Anne-Marie. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Board of Directors meeting. Thank you for joining us. We're in stage three of the province's reopening. I want to, and I want to encourage everyone to continue doing their part to keep themselves and everyone safe. We'll start today's meeting with our land acknowledgement. Let us take a moment to acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of many nations, in particular, the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, and the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat. We acknowledge that Metrolinx operates on these lands and has a responsibility to work with the original keepers of this territory and the many diverse indigenous peoples living here today. Thank you. Before we get into our meeting, I'd like to invite Helen Fierro Walker, Chief Human Resource Officer, to lead us in our safety briefing. Great, thank you, Mr. Chair, and good morning, everybody. And so, um, being in stage three, uh, people are uh, out and about um, gradually increasing, um, and uh, there's more people in the neighborhoods, in schools, um, on transit, and that's increasing. And something to always watch out for is slips, trips, and falls. An added element um, as we are in stage three is wearing face coverings. And as you do that, we are hearing reports of people having um, different depth perception because of wearing a face covering. And so a safety moment is for us to take extra precaution when we are out and about and walking, going upstairs, elevators, uh, onto trains, buses um, in your neighborhood uh, to be aware of the different death perception that a, that a face covering provides um, to avoid potential slips, trips, and falls. Thank you. Thank you, Helen. Um, the next item uh, that I'd just like to speak to for a moment is that we've had the following correspondence uh, from folks who have, that, that has been distributed to our board. One, a letter from Troy Budhu on behalf of the Jane Finch Community Hub and Center for the Arts Organizing Committee dated September the 8th, 2020, regarding the Finch LRT land transfer. And secondly, letters from Claudia Espinola on September the 3rd, Evangeline Kroon on September the 8th, Janet Kierdorf, August 31st, Nancy Foster, September the 9th, Maureen Busby O'Connor on September the 5th, Tim O'Regan on the 9th, Susan uh, Kroon on the 7th, and a young girl from the neighborhood on September the 9th, 2020, regarding the use of the Margaret Green Park in Guelph for a transfer power station to support GO expansion, electrification on the Kitchener Corridor 
and the other community impacts to the city of Guelph. In addition to our usual quarterly reports today, we have several items on, on the agenda for discussion, including our customer Wi-Fi solution, an update on our customer safety planning and recovery initiatives, and our plans around service reinstatement and new services that are coming out this fall. Before we get into these items, uh, Phil Verster, our CEO, will give his CEO update. Over to you, Phil. Thank you very much, Don. Um, good morning, everyone. I'm very pleased to report this week we've added back 152 train trips as part of our September service changes. And amongst those um, are increases in a new bus route connecting the 905 communities with Toronto suburbs. And in uh, the next weekend, we'll be adding two more brand new trips on the Barry line, um, which is all very exciting. For us to be adding services back um, is a real sign of recovery in our region. Um, and the size of this service add back that we're doing is one of the biggest service uh, step changes that we've seen in, in recent years. Um, and it picks up on a period of uh, reduced ridership, as you can imagine, during the pandemic itself, which we'll share some more thoughts with you. While we've introduced the frequency of trains on some lines to meet the expected demand with the reopening of schools and increased return to workplaces, we have also increased um, off-peak trains, um, and the off-peak services have become more and more attractive, and we see quite an increase in ridership on our off-peak services. And this week's, this week's reintroduction of services will continue to focus on the safety of trains and people's health um, as, they, um, as they come back to our transit. And we focused an, a huge amount of effort over the last couple of months to make sure that we guarantee the health of our customers. Um, we've, uh, in addition to our installation of health and safety kiosks at our stations, health and safety kiosks are where people can see their temperature and where we demonstrate um, how important it is to keep physical distancing as well as cleanliness um, of our cleaner, cleaning agents we use. Um, we've also introduced seat dividers, carb polycarbonate screens that protect drive uh, uh, every rider from the person that may sit next to them. And we've done that on buses and trains and at stations. And the focus, therefore, on health and safety um, of our customers is paramount. Uh, you, you would also know that we have changed our approach to face coverings from making it um, optional to making it mandatory. And now on all of our services, we're seeing about a 95% uptake of people um, that use face coverings and face masks. And, and that's very encouraging to see because that shows we all look after one another's safety. Um, we have as well maintained our Safety Never Stops campaign, and that campaign keeps the importance of safety messages uh, top of mind and we cover quite a lot of ground um, in those in, in that campaign. We, um, we also restarted our weekend go service, services to Niagara at the end of July and this is fantastic for us. Niagara is uh, obviously a, a fantastic uh, venue and the response from customers have been great. Um, we're also very appreciative of the, the ridership return to our network. And we've now seen 20 straight weeks of ridership increases. And uh, give you a sense of where we are, we are now on weekdays at around between uh, 16 to 18% of the ridership we had pre-COVID. And on weekends at around 35% of the ridership we had pre-COVID, pre, pre which is a significant increase from where we were. Um, in, recent, in, in recent months. We also launched uh, Presto e-tickets in Durham and in Hamilton, working closely with uh, Durham Regional Transit, as well as uh, HSR in Hamilton. Um, and, and these partners are, are, are very key to us in taking Presto into um, the, next, the, the next stage of its development. On our capital projects, uh, we've reached several milestones, and it's, it's useful to just reflect on the fact that our capital projects program 
have not slowed down during COVID. We've maintained our uh, production rates and we've maintained um, uh, our delivery. And recently we've achieved another milestone with the first of the two tunnels on the Highway 401 stroke 409 uh, tunneling project have been completed and have broken through. Um, as as Anne-Marie referred to, we've done another round of our public consultations with GOE expansion and, and um, the, the consultation with communities on all of our projects remain a priority and, and we focus on getting that um, the messages on what we're doing to go forward relentlessly. Um, as we are uh, as we are going more and more towards a lifting of the lockdowns, we're also preparing our offices and our workplaces for our office workers to return to work. Extremely important to to just recognise the fact that more than half our workforce, frontline workers have been diligently out there, um, despite the pandemic, working um, normal jobs uh, and making sure that the essential services that go bus and go rail and up express and presto delivered during the COVID period have been delivered seamlessly. Um, and now as uh, schools reopen, um, we are very tac tactfully and very sensitively uh, reopening our workplaces and bringing our office workers slowly but surely back to the office. In the end, Transit is a 24-7 business um, and we all contribute to that. As we always do at board meetings, I want to give recognition and say a big thank you to all our hardworking teams who have been so resilient in these times. And I want to recognize some of the teams that have performed superbly well. And I'd like to start with our incident command team, um, who have done an incredible job to ensure our agility and responsiveness to COVID-19. Um, and I wish to recognize Jeff Harris, Vitu Mangialadi, and Martin Gallagher for their outstanding stewardship of the incident command team. Now, even before COVID-19 was formally declared, they identified the threat and we launched the incident command team as early as uh, in mid-January. And Martin, our Chief Safety Officer, Vito, who champions our business continuity planning, and Jeff, who leads our risk assessment, were front and center to, uh, to, to launching a huge program of useful tools, processes, business continuity plans, revision of business continuity plans, and, and key actions that helped our teams to mitigate and the impacts of the crisis. So on behalf of the whole Metrolinx family, I will say a big thank you to, uh, to you and the commitment that you showed and to everyone in your teams, because these are team efforts um, and, and for what you have done both for employees and customers uh, during, the, during the pandemic. I also want to highlight the team behind our mailroom and our corporate services operation. You know, this team, this, uh, Different we need every team to, to deliver in order for the whole organization to succeed. And this team shifted the operations very significantly to meet the needs of our communities and our, our frontline teams and our staff. Um, they were called on to deliver PPE to frontline teams, to deliver computers to frontline teams, monitors to employees working from home. Um, very different things that this team normally does. And, and Alan Neering, Brenda Bailey, Lisa Henry, Mark Mason, Peter Passord, Yunus Malam, and Gay Baxi. You guys were fantastic. My, my heartiest commendation to you for your flexibility and for your help that you gave people. The work you do often goes by unnoticed, um, and, and I just think it's fantastic what you've done for us in this case. And before I conclude, I want to commend the Integrated Marketing and Comms team for some of the huge wins they achieved during the, during the quarter. Um, the marketing team spearheaded the Go Transit uh, safety uh, domination campaign and the Go Bus auto campaigns. And both of these won awards um, from the Transit Marketing Sales Association. Um, and, and this is just another, another great result. Um, awards isn't everything. 
Um, but it is that sort of cherry on top that confirms that what the teams have done compares with the best out there. And I think that's fantastic. Thank you very much and congratulations to you. Our Metrolink's news site, which is also managed by the communications team, won an ACE award from the Canadian Public Relations Society for communications excellence. Um, and congratulations to you too. Um, I'll now hand over to uh, Meredith Sumner and Sharon Berniering to talk about our customer Wi-Fi solution. Thank you, Phil. Good morning, everyone. Sharon and I are excited to bring an update to the board about the customer Wi-Fi solution. We wanted to highlight the installation, the customer communications campaign, and at the end of the presentation, we will share a video that demonstrates the customer experience of the Go Wi-Fi Plus portal. Mm -hmm. Go Transit customers on slide two, Vince, um, is really something that Go Transit customers have indicated that customer Wi-Fi and free Wi-Fi in particular is the number one amenity that they would like to see on board vehicles. And we're excited to share that the installation of Wi-Fi equipment on our Go buses and trains is progressing well. What we want to highlight today, moving on to slide three, is really the customer experience. So when we talk about customer Wi-Fi, what we've designed is a solution that goes well beyond Wi-Fi connectivity. Customers can sign on to an entertainment portal that has curated content from partners such as CTV, Bloomberg, Stingray, Coursera, and many others. This wide range of content also of gives many genres for customers that can then watch, read, or listen uh, during their ride with Go Transit. And through the video at the end, we'll, dem we'll showcase many of the features that highlight and elevate the customer experience. And it allows the customers to experience Go Wi-Fi Plus as an opportunity to be productive and really <clears throat> deliver on our marketing promise of find your go time. Through the sign-on process, customers can even opt in to, hear, to receive special offers and promotions from Go Transit. So moving on to slide four, what we have is an example of how customers can easily identify a Wi-Fi enabled bus or train when they're about to board a vehicle. This is through onboard signage, as well as announcements from the crew. I'll turn it over to Sharon to talk a little bit more about the customer communication campaign. Great. Thank you so much, Meredith. Um, so on the next slide, obviously a slide featuring one of our beloved um, brand assets, GoBear. Uh, so this campaign will be supported with a really robust, highly integrated marketing campaign. It will launch in the fall. It will run through the winter and it will include uh, owned paid and earned media as part of that integrated component. It will also have a multicultural campaign targeting the eight spoken languages of, of our ridership base, uh, the top eight languages. Uh, so the campaign will be trans-created with, the, with these writers in mind. Um, so we had, to, we had decided creatively as a strategy that well, every product launch needs its own celebrity endorsement. So just like Calvin Klein has Justin Timberlake or um, other big brands have the likes of Rihanna or Beyonce. Well, we have Gobert. He may not be Beyonce, but he can certainly bring a little bit of pizzazz to this campaign. So we've worked closely with our ad agency and Gobert will be featured as the hero in our creative campaign through paid social, digital advertising and online videos to help to bring to life the different types of genres and content that the portal um, will provide. So if you'll indulge us, we have a very short video. It's only about a minute and a half long. And as Meredith described, it does give you a little bit of a glimpse at what the user experience and what the quality of the content will look like on the portal. So Vince, if you can please play the Wi-Fi video. To Wi-Fi data, exciting TV shows, cool music, and tons of amazing content. Everyone is excited for the Go Wi-Fi Plus portal. It'll bring your Go train and bus experience to a whole new level. Sign in is quick and easy. First, choose the Go Wi-Fi network in settings. Connect to the network and sign in with your registered Presto card, email and password to get 50 megs of free data. The entire login process is protected and meets all security standards. Next, 
Choose Remember Me for instant access every time. If you want special offers and promotions for events and attractions around the city, then sign up here. And you're all set! You'll love exploring all the amazing content. It's easy to use, mobile friendly, and designed to ensure a great experience for riders of all abilities. The handy trip timer feature lets you choose content to match the length of your trip. Scroll through what you want to watch, listen, or read. We've got top TV shows, cool music videos, and compelling documentaries. Pleasure to have you. Thanks for being such amazing hosts. I look forward to uh, the tour tomorrow. Connect Tokyo with Osaka, Japan's two biggest cities. With great music, podcasts, and audiobooks, sit back, listen up, and enjoy. This is Apollo Saturn Launch Control. We are now at T minus eight hours, 58 minutes. And Walk into a museum. It's a little bit crowded. There are people taking selfies next to famous art. Catch up on your reading with a variety of ebooks, including bestsellers in exciting fiction, engaging nonfiction, and many other genres. Let us know how we're doing by giving us helpful feedback. Have your say and fill out the survey. Everyone will love getting on board and enhancing their journey on the go with the Go Wi Fi Plus portal. Ah, technology, what can we do? So we'll just make sure that we get that video sent around so you can watch it from the outset. But um, Meredith and I are happy to take any questions that you have right now. And let's not play the next video yet, Vince, please. Yeah, I, I just had a question, if I may, Don. Please go ahead. Yeah, no, thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for this. Just a question. Um, how are we going to deal with the, the people who love to have their stuff on loud? in the car because this is i mean it you know i can see where people would want to use this and and uh quite happy to be listening to it but perhaps not quietly or with earphones or whatever that's a really great question um so as you know we're uh, we're very strict on uh on etiquette on our go transit system and we we've had a lot of success in the past with our etiquette campaigns and i definitely see an integration of some of that etiquette those gentle etiquette reminders. Um, we actually have, um, as part of our production, we actually took a, we have a shot of Gobear with his headphones on his ears, and we can certainly use that as part of our communication strategy to remind people to listen quietly. Yeah, we might need it. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Any other questions? Anybody would like to ask? Yes. Robert, uh, thank you so much. And I think this is such a great initiative. My question is, um, having experienced myself on, uh, particularly on the GO trains where, uh, my own cell phone will, will lose network connections or I, you know, the, the, it'll be very slow. How are we, um, I know you're testing, but how are we going to ensure that the client experience will not be the same as what they're witnessing today? And second of all, um, is, 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 is everything streamed or are the movies and that, are they locally held? Like within the system? So for the portal, what we have, everything that you've seen in the video is hosted on each vehicle. There's a server on each vehicle. So it's encouraging customers to use that experience versus going out and getting their own connectivity. Um, to you know stream videos but there is a there is a system in place to ensure that there is a fair use for everyone so when you sign on and you get your 50 megs when you've used your presto um, sign on you get 50 megs of data and then if you go beyond that you have to start a new session and you end up um, being throttled but we're really about trying to make it a fair policy for everyone to use the system and enjoy it so the content that we've selected for the portal is really going to give a wide range of options for people to engage and use that. And if you want to go off and check your check your social media or use your email and be productive on your way home or to from <laughs> from work, then there's that, that option for you as well. And Great, Meredith, thank you. Meredith, with, with regard to um, Paul's question on. Um, losing contact. The portal does have a buffer, buffering approach, doesn't that? Doesn't it? So that your experience and say you do emails and stuff like that should be, should feel uninterrupted, but it should, Correct. The, the portal itself would search 
for network during that period without you losing, losing connectivity. Correct. And even for the customers who go off and use the Wi-Fi on their own, um, we have data from a couple of different providers to ensure that we've got connectivity through all of the spots that we know on our system there are some dead zones, so to speak. Uh, M Meredith, it's uh, Mike Karoljevic here. Uh, just a quick question. Um, uh, customers like nothing better than free access. Just confirming, uh, is it is it free or is there a charge to the customer? No, it is 100% free. Excellent. Okay. Janet, you had a question? Yeah, just another question. Sorry about that, Meredith. Um, and this may be a really, really dumb question, but uh, what about the privacy protections on this? If they're using our servers on the different vehicles and things like that, and then you mentioned checking emails, et cetera. I mean, there's no tracking or anything like that, that that's happening that people should, you know, would be nervous about? No. So when you uh, sign on, um, it's secure or protected. And if you are going to be doing any of your work emails, um, assuming the customer would need to sign on to their own work VPN, so they have an added layer of security through their own work VPN, just as if we were to, to try and log in um, to do any of our work on the trains. Um, but from a secure and privacy data perspective, um, everything that is encrypted and de-identified and aggregated, so there's no concern from our perspective. Okay. Thank you. Okay, any other questions on this item? Yes, Brian. Uh, Brian? Just for those of us who are uh, a bit technically ignorant, uh, the 50 megs that we get, uh, how much will I be able to watch? Say I'm traveling from uh, Union Station to Oshawa. Would I get in a, a half a movie? What would I get? Well, what we're doing is we're actually limiting the ability for customers to stream on their own. So you wouldn't be able to go to your own Netflix account and watch a movie or download something there. Um, we're encouraging customers to use the content that we have on the portal, but you definitely would be able to go and look at the news, look at your sports highlights, check your social media, do any of your emails or work productivity that you might be a want, to, want to do, or maybe even order your groceries from PC Express. Um, that experience is very well in hand, and we think that's, that's a lot of data um, for customers to be able to use during their session. Um, and then, of course, we have all the great content on the portal that we are encouraging customers to experience as well. Okay. Any other questions? <laughs> okay, hearing none, thank you very much, Meredith and Sharon. Um, thank you. Thank you. So we'll move on to the uh, next item with the, which uh, Trish and Sharon once again is going to do, and that's customer safety planning and recovery. Thank you very much, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Don, mm -hmm. and good morning, everyone. Um, and uh, I will start and then uh, turn over to Sharon. Always a pleasure uh, to be speaking to you uh, once again. So the purpose of uh, my update today is to give you a progress uh, check on our health and safety focused actions that we have put in place. We, we spoke to you about at our last board meeting in June that we had underway and we have uh, all of those uh, in place for a nearing communication. And, um, and then we'll, Sharon will talk a little bit about the communication campaign that is uh, working to reassure customers uh, and attract them back to our services uh, post COVID-19. So uh, we've talked about the um, the health and safety tactics that we've uh, introduced, uh, and we've uh, already received uh, positive feedback and many verbatims uh, from customers about uh, about our our safety features. And we're continuing to monitor their feedback and adjust uh, as needed. And uh, our customer analytics and research team will speak to you a little bit after my conversation and Sharon's just to talk about um, how we're validating that we've got the right trips and the right uh, and the right frequency and the right uh, size uh, and scope of consists. And we'll continue. Uh, Sharon will speak to you about the Safety Never Stops campaign, which we launched to reassure and attract customers and which will be ongoing and helping them to understand how to return to Go Transit and how best uh, to ride the service. So uh, Vince, I'm actually on slide two of the presentation, which uh, talks about the, sorry, slide th three, I should say, 
which uh, speaks about uh, the, the various safety measures that, that we have put in place. So this would be the, the slide saying, continue to reassure our customers with safety measures in place. We, uh, Phil, in his remarks, spoke about the uh, mandatory uh, face coverings, which we had uh, put in place uh, both for our employees and for our customers. And as Phil mentioned, we are we are doing some monitoring on, on board, and we are seeing a very, very high compliance rate, up to 95%. And just uh, as a reminder, we did equip uh, our uh, revenue protection officers and our station attendants with uh, one-time single-use disposable face coverings, which can be provided to customers in the event that they forgot or they're unaware of the mandatory face covering policy. And um, to date, uh, we've distributed, uh, revenue protection officers have distributed uh, over 400 uh, face masks and uh, station attendants over 300. So we're seeing good compliance and we expect that that will continue over the coming weeks. We spoke about uh, hand sanitizers in June. So we have, we will have, we have added, I'm sorry, 300 additional hand sanitizer dispensers in, in our station network where we already had them in place and we're adding them in places such as tunnel entrances and door entrances, so where they're obvious to customers uh, that they can be used. And they are, uh, they do have a foot pedal, so it's not, um, one doesn't have to touch, one can, one can touch the foot pedal and dispense the hand sanitizer uh, on arrival. We have new dispensers uh, coming on board uh, trains. We actually have 4,000 hand sanitizer dispensers that will be installed on all rail cars. It's done and it will be completed by September 25th. And for all buses, we had hand sanitizers installed and completed uh, in March. On the high touch point cleaning or the uh, onboard cleaning that Phil referred to also in his remarks, we have redeployed what, 70, 70 station attendants uh, to, to do perform the high touch point cleaning. So on rail, they are traveling the trains and they are performing the high touch point cleaning uh, within full visibility uh, of customers. So customers are seeing the high touch point cleaning happening. And we're again, receiving some extremely positive verbatims and comments from customers about how clean the trains are and how they feel very reassured that we're taking their cleaning so seriously. <clears throat> we have also moved our station attendants uh, from behind the service booth. They are now 100% roaming the station, assisting customers with uh, wayfinding, trip planning, and helping to customers uh, to move along the train platforms where where customer where the trains will stop and where the entry and exit doors are. Uh, Phil mentioned our health and safety kiosks. There are 26 kiosks that have been uh, deployed across 59 locations, and they include the ability for a temperature check. And in some other locations, you have the opportunity to check the cleanliness of your devices uh, and also emphasize the importance of hand washing. Uh, Seat, uh, Phil also spoke about the partitions, the seat dividers on uh, buses and trains, and that has been, we have um, now, we have 13 train sets in use that have the par seat partitions between uh, each seat, and we have 31 buses, and we are continuing our installation. So the rail fleet will be completed by September 28th, and the bus fleet will be completed by October 31st. So taking that uh, very, very seriously and continuing on that path. And for transit safety and revenue protection, we did have a return to revenue protection beginning in August because we did have a bit of a pause uh, during the during the worst of the pandemic when ridership was so low and there was a concern, obviously, with the physical distancing uh, with a revenue protection officer approaching a customer. So we've we've uh, we've re-equipped uh, our revenue protection officers with the appropriate PPE, and their approach when they started uh, in August was uh, fair and welcoming to all. Their approach was to educate customers and inform about the importance of having a fair payment and also the use of face coverings. So initially, when we returned to revenue protection in August, our evasion rate was uh, just over 5%. And as of September 4th, we've now reduced that to 3.55%. So we are seeing a return of customers paying the fare and, 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 and behaving uh, in the appropriate way. So if there are no questions on the health and safety features, I can turn it over to, to Sharon to talk about communication. Great, there, thank you so there, much, Trish. So, sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna ask, are there any questions on the safety aspect that anybody would like to ask? Okay, go, go ahead. Uh, go Great, ahead, th thank you, Mr. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so we just wanted to highlight kind of where we're at with respect to the Safety Never Stops campaign. So obviously on August 1st, in line with um, moving into stage three, our big paid campaign kicked off for Safety Never Stops. And really what that did was two things. Tonally, we started to sh to be a bit more fun, have a bit more of a smile, but still deliver this, the, the very serious safety messages that we wanted to deliver. But with a little bit of sugar, if you will. Um, and then also just a big integration. So obviously our media relations team did an outstanding job from the outset of COVID. And really our paid campaign is, is augmenting and amplifying all of the messages that people have been hearing throughout this pandemic. Um, we've also used and optimized all of our owned asset space across the network. So we have about 220 different types of assets across the network and tens of thousands of facings. And we've been using those to our advantage to deliver the two types of messages that we want to deliver. One, how to keep yourself safe on our system and two, how we are keeping you safe through all of the different um, measures that we have in place. So on the next slide, Vince, please, I just want to highlight kind of some early, early kind of impacts of the campaign, the campaigns in the market, as I mentioned, since August 1st, and um, from everything from online video, paid social, digital, and then all of the in situ. Um, we've seen some incredible success uh, thus far. We have um, an online video that's a long format ad, and it's actually had a 98% completion rate, which is kind of unheard of in this space. We were all astounded and had to really like double and triple check the numbers to make sure that was accurate. But people were not skipping a skippable ad after 15 seconds. So uh, we're really, really thrilled with that. And what that tells us is a couple of things. It tells us that people are receptive to the message right now, and also that the creative is breaking through and engaging people right to the end, which is really phenomenal. And we're certainly seeing that in um, our media investment. We're seeing uh, big savings when it comes to um, cost per thousand and our click through our completion rates on our videos, um, which is great. That's that's really, really important to us. Um, so I also wanted to speak quickly for so a, a big uh, kudos for our media relations team. As you know, we have um, our Metrolinks blog for COVID-19. It's kind of our source of all truth, and it's had over 115,000 views. Um, I think if I understand it correctly, our July numbers kind of pretty much were all of last year's numbers, which is phenomenal. So congratulations to the communications team uh, for using that as a really great space to uh, update um, our writers, but also media and our customers and potential customers on, on what we're doing in this space. So as we look to the fall, um, we have lots more exciting things. It's really important that we keep our creative nice and fresh and friendly um, as people are starting to uh, have an intention to write again. So we have some exciting things coming up in the fall. We will have a multicultural uh, component to our campaign across like the eight minutes um, languages that I spoke to before, transcreated for those specific audiences. We'll also have um, this media integration with other brand campaigns that Leslie will talk about shortly. And um, we'll have some surprise and delight, some interesting, um, unexpected things will be coming as well. I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag, but there's some fun stuff coming down the pipe. Um, but lastly, I also want to talk about branded content because as people are coming back to the service, it's going to be a different service than they've seen before. It's going to be slight. It's the same go but a little bit different. And we wanted to edutain people. Um, and who best to help us do that than, of course, our beloved GoBear. Um, so GoBear is going to uh, teach people how to go like a pro, go like GoBear. Um, and we've pulled together, just if you'll indulge us, a very, again, short video. Um, I understand it's it's playing very well on the, the videos are playing well on the public side. Um, just a little bit of a delay on our side. Uh, so if you'll bear with us, we do have a one minute video that shows just a, co a small compilation of the sample of these branded content videos that will be um, uh, putting organically across our social channels, but also in paid advertising. Thank you. Vince, if you can play our GoBear video, please. Always wear a face covering. In stations, on platforms, trains and buses. Don't wear it like this, this, or this. Wear it like this. Way to smile with your eyes, Go Bear. Our health and safety kiosks are ready for you. Find out your temperature, the cleanliness of your personal belongings, and more. Now that's a clean jar of honey. With the updated Presto app, you can load funds onto your Presto card instantly. So no need for this or this or to wait here. Go from app to tap just like that. Our schedules have changed and we'll keep updating them to serve you better. So be sure to visit gotransit.com to see the latest schedules. Have a very safe trip. Heads up, we've got new signs. They'll tell you which way to go, where to sit, what to do, 
and what not to do to keep us all safer. Go Transit. Safety never stops. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Any Thank you, Mr. Chair. Chair? Yes, Janet. Yeah, um, what, uh, are we doing anything on the safety stuff to stop the, this sort of the, the current trend to um, um, take selfies in front of oncoming trains and various odds and swads, events of that kind? Are we going to be addressing that through, through this, through GoBear or some other way? Um, so I'll, I'll actually, I'll pass that over to Trish to, to respond from an operations perspective. From a safety perspective, we actually have created in the past, and I'm happy to share this along later, um, some like uh, close near misses uh, safety content that we have developed in the past. And, and I understand it was in our recent blog that went on mx.com. Um, um, but definitely, I think um, it's a it's a it's a very scary, um, a very unsafe situation um, with this TikTok influence. And, and, and I, th I think we're going to address it. I, I know that Amory has, is very, very passionate specifically about this, uh, this getting this message out. Thanks, Sharon. Yes, and just, just to confirm, so my colleague Bill Grzynski and team have taken this very, very seriously. And as Sharon quite right, we created some work on Metrolink's blog. Bill did some interviews recently, uh, and uh, a number of them, and, and uh, perhaps Anne-Marie could speak a bit more uh, clearly about specifically when and who and how many media outlets, but it was very well received. And we, we showed some uh, some of those incidences, uh, Janet, that you're referring to, and just, just talking about how unsafe it is, and uh, and Bill and T Bill has a created a special response team that he is uh, looking to address uh, these this type of behavior. So we, we understand uh, it's it's there have been some terrible incidences, and uh, and we're trying extremely hard to let the public understand how serious this is, and then and then try to try to try to make sure that we can stop this behavior as quickly as we can. Thank you, Trish. Brian, you had a question. Well, on a much less serious tone than uh, than Janet's question, uh, the Go Bear, I must say, is very, someone said, cute. It's extremely cute. Are we going to license it and merchandise it at all? I can see uh, yes. the toddlers in my family <laughs> wanting it. Uh, absolutely, Brian. Watch this space. There's lots more coming um, from probably our non first sales team in the very near future. But absolutely, kids of all ages love GoBear. And um, and across our, our social media channels, we've actually been using a mini version of GoBear who goes on, on amazing adventures. He hasn't been on a lot of adventures lately, but he will be going on some adventures soon. So uh, you can watch the space for more. But there's a, there's a lot of love for GoBear out there for sure. Thank you. Okay, well, thank you very much for that uh, presentation. Uh, it's always interesting to, to see where we are in that. We take safety so so seriously that it's good to, to see all the things that we're doing. Um, the, the next item on the agenda is the, uh, is the new services and the reinstatement of, of services uh, from... Uh, from the pandemic, and uh, Ken, Leslie, and Mark are going to speak to this. Thank you, Chair. I'll kick it off. Um, Thank you. Good morning. Um, as Phil mentioned in his opening remarks, uh, we have introduced well over 150 um, trips um, on on both for bus and and rail, and and really this is um, this is the story behind the numbers. Um, I, uh, I'll, I'll hand it over to Ken shortly, and then, and then Mark will take you through the, the, the where, the how, and the where, and then, and then why people should uh, actually start to return and ride to us. And not that they haven't, but we, we want to encourage uh, both um, use of these new services for flexible work arrangements. So a lot of off-peak services will you'll see if you check your schedule before you leave the house. Um, and also leisure activities for getting around town. Um, you know, we know that uh, working with partners such as Niagara Parks, um, we we have seen demand for exploring your backyard um, uh, within uh, stage three. And also, once people arrive to our stations, you know, what are the amenities that we have recently introduced? And I'll, I'll, I'll kick it off at the end. So um, right now, I'll hand it over to Ken to take you through the numbers. Thank you, Leslie. Vince, if we could go to slide three, please. So when looking at the ridership, Phil indicated early on that we've seen 18 weeks or we've seen 20 weeks of growth. So one thing I can tell you is that ridership has never been changing so quickly and so dynamically. 
So every day the team goes in and they assess what's happening across the network. And since April, where we did see a low ridership level of 2.7%, and here we're talking about 8.5% in July, but most recently we've been seeing up to 18% this past week or this early this week and 35% this past weekend. So ridership continues to grow quite steadily. Some of the things that we have to keep an eye on that can influence ridership are what's happening with COVID, first and foremost. That certainly influences a lot of people's decisions. What businesses are doing to adapt to COVID. A lot of our ridership in the past came from people coming into and out of Toronto in the mornings and going home in the evenings. One thing that we have seen as a fairly significant change is that ridership, which used to happen um, 60% of it in the morning peak and the evening peak is now 40%, and that 60% is coming midday and off peak times, including weekends. So we've seen a really big shift in ridership, and with this information, we work closely with our operations team to make sure that we plan services to meet these uh, ever adapting or ever changing needs. The other thing that we saw as a bit of a change was in the morning time, um, peak would usually happen at a very specific time. And what we're seeing is that shifted to 30 to 45 minutes earlier. And we know that this is uh, to really support the essential workers and people who are working in construction downtown. Their days start earlier and end earlier. So some of the new services that were just brought into play, this actually gives people in these circumstances a lot more options to come into work and to leave home. And the other thing we're seeing on the weekend is where we used to see a fairly strong ridership happen at the end, around the 5 p.m. time. It's again, even throughout the day. So we have to continue to monitor how people are using services in, and how they're adjusting to their lives to make sure that in the end, what we're doing is providing a comprehensive, thoughtful service that gets them where they want to go and when they want to go. And to that, I am going to pass it over to Mark and we should be on slide five. Mark. I'll jump in. It's, um, it's, I'm not Mark Bailey. I'm Mark Childs. I'm happy to, to jump in here. So I just will, um, on page five, please, Vince, um, just refer to um, some of the changes that, that we've talked to, specifically um, the, uh, the service changes that came into effect on Saturday, um, which really, uh, in, in simple form, really give our customers a much greater opportunity to plan their schedules um, as as meets their schedule in terms of flexibility, particularly those folks that are coming back to work. Um, so we have uh, introduced um, over 152 new trips and realigned um, bus services to ensure uh, that that flexible work schedule can be met. Um, and for those folks um, who may may want to visit family and friends. Um, or, or tour the region, as Leslie mentioned, um, during the weekends, um, have, have those options, um, both on Lakeshore East West, Stovall, and this coming weekend, um, in, back in Barrie. And so, um, again, we're really excited about the, the offerings here. Um, I will say that the early, uh, earlier introduction at the beginning, uh, introduction at the beginning of, um, August, uh, long weekend, uh, reintroducing Niagara service has seen a really, um, a really positive uh, response from our customers. Um, um, actually far exceeding on that weekend, uh, the ridership on family day earlier in the year. So uh, really positive um, uh, and really sort of a signal um, as, as we we're in stage uh, three, um, that it is safe to, to, to use transit and travel with transit again. I think I'm going to pass it back uh, to uh, you, Leslie, to take us through um, sort of uh, the customer experience aspects. Yeah, so we can go to slide seven. Thank you. Next slide. One more of it. Thank, thank you. As Mark mentioned, uh, the Niagara Parks um, Partnership, which is now uh, we reinstated uh, the August long weekend uh, in its third year, um, we are about 60% of where we were in terms of uptick from last year. So in the middle of a pandemic, I mean, this is incredibly encouraging that we are seeing that there is demand for these what we're calling staycations so whether that is taking a trip up to Barrie you know when the last edges of summer weather to enjoy a beach uh, a beachfront view um, or if it's you know 
traveling out to uh, again to Niagara or making a stop in St. Catharines. I mean, there's a lot of nature around us. So we know that there is definitely the service is going to meet that demand. Um, but, you know, beyond, you know, when you get, get to the station, you know, we've also introduced, um, uh, Balzac's has returned to Up Express at Union Station. It reopened in, in August. It's going to be open Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to uh, 3 p.m. Uh, it's a well-loved amenity there, as well as um, we've launched a pilot with a, an organization called Pleats Coffee. It's a mobile truck. Uh, it appeared uh, last week at Maple Go. Um, it will be open uh, Monday to Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., and uh, other, other stations will follow in the fall. We've also uh, introduced uh, PPE vending machines, personal protect protective equipment uh, vending machines at Oakville Go and uh, at the Skywalk, um, with six more to follow in the fall. So, so once people check the schedule, they find the trip that they want, the where they want to go, and when they go to the station, they can they can feel reassured that they have a coffee, and they're protected for their journey at this time. Good. Thank you. Just a quick question, John. Go just, ahead, John. Yeah, yeah. Just what uh, there's been some speculation with the numbers of COVID cases increasing in Toronto and Peel that there may be um, sort of selective, uh, more restrictive lockdowns coming in some regions and stuff. I'm, I'm, how would that impact us? Do we leave things the way they are, or would we have to change? Or any thoughts on what's happening on that? Janet, this is Mark. I'm happy to take uh, that that question. Um, I think you know the, the service at reintroduction that occurred this weekend. Um, I think first and foremost uh, provides the flexibility um, for schedules, but also um, within increasing frequency. We know is something that our customers absolutely want. So I think what we've done is we've set um, you know set a schedule. Uh, that can can be adapted for individuals to choose the right trains themselves. And so at this point, I would say, you know, we, we will continue to monitor the ridership um, on, on each of those trips and adjust as necessary in terms of the, the length of the trains. Um, but again, we think this is the, you know, this is the schedule that, that ultimately will help us kind of move into stage three and ultimately, um, you know, customers and, and individual regions um, can, can, can select in or out if you're a customer. But ultimately, it is about uh, health and safety first. And so all of the all of our actions are very much rooted in the Safety Never Stops campaign, the, the, the initiatives we've just heard about. Um, and uh, we would very much, um, you know, request our customers to wear the mandatory face covering. The seat dividers also we know is, a, is an important step um, to, to encourage folks to be able to sit wherever they choose um, on the train safely. Thanks, Mark. And any other questions on this topic? Uh, yeah, Don, Paul? Go ahead, Paul. Um, uh, or Mark and team, do we have a sense for the sort of post-secondary education customers? Uh, clearly, as students move from in-person, from in-person to remote, uh, do we have a sense for that market and how it's impacted our business, either positively or negatively? I can answer that one. Um, we... If, if I can start, Ken, I'll uh, hand it over to you. Um, we, we, we do know from our, our existing research, but also research that just came out of Ryerson University, um, that um, about 36% of trips within the Ryerson study were, are related to school travel, getting to school. So that, so, so the majority of trips within that study suggested that it was for discretionary travel. So, you know, discretionary travel is, is, is just as important, uh, to the, to our business, um, as, as, as that, those services to, to the secondary institutions. So we are very much marketing, um, our, our, especially the off peak services, um, uh, which we know are, are highly desirable. Um, but I'll hand it over to Ken to talk, um, a bit deeper on some of those other aspects. So, so to add on to what Leslie shared, we did some, uh, foundational research early on, and we identified that about 25% of post-secondary students would be expected to be in classrooms. And it did vary a little bit, and that was based on the universities that replied to us. The other thing that wasn't clear, and it's still not 100% clear, is how many students are actually living in residence. So we do know some people are actually going into residence, 
but attending classes virtually. What we've made sure we've done throughout the entire pandemic is continue to offer all the services to all of our destinations. And then what we do throughout this is we assess each individual trip for capacity. We work with the front lines to understand if they're having issues on board any of the vehicles in terms of capacity, and then we adapt. So if we need to increase services to those destinations, we increase services. And if we find that we're at the right amount, we just freeze. And I hope that addresses your, your question. And I, and I think that's the key thing, uh, Paul. Uh, we, through Ken and, and, and having, having invested quite a lot of effort into getting Ken and his team um, and the numeracy of our marketing information um, to a level now where we understand which buses are used most often by what type of ridership and adjusting services on buses, for example, in that fashion. Logistics on trains don't allow for as much um, day by day adjustment and, and our operations team would adjust that by, by service board changes as we do um, a couple of times during the year. But we extend train lengths and we respond very, very much in real time. And, and the real issue here is going to be about what trends of ridership return in the coming months and we're keeping a very close eye on this continuously. And thank you. Just add... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Ken. I, I just want to add a little bit more to what Phil said because I think there's another element in there that I think we need to give the operations team some credit for. So in one of the Niagara trips, which was busier than we anticipated, there was an issue where some people weren't comfortable with the level of crowding on board the vehicle, and they dispatched buses real time to help out those customers still get to their destination. I think that type of flexibility and the ability to add coaches to existing classes almost uh, within one or two days, these are all the little things that the operations team and the businesses are doing to, to meet our customers' needs. Thank Thanks, you. Um, okay, um, I, I think we'll move on to our next topic. The next topic is uh, reports from uh, different divisions. I think we'll take them as read, but if any directors have questions on them, uh, please, please feel free to ask them now. No questions? Okay. All right. Well, that, that concludes uh, our, our public meeting. Uh, and um, uh, I thank everybody for attending. And I, I thank everyone for their presentations. And, uh, and questions. So thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you uh, the next quarter. Thank you. Gentlemen, I'm just going to wrap up. I'll say to Marie again. I'm just going to wrap you? up uh, uh, right okay, now. So um, to, to thank everyone for their interest in transit and that uh, to remind you that you can get all of the material that we've been talking about at metrolinks.com under the board meeting. The agenda has all of those reports. Um, and please stay engaged with us by um, checking out MetrolinksEngage.com. That's always um, helpful. And we'll see you at the next virtual board meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye.